what's up everybody Kamal here welcome to another video um, so I'm gonna make another mead I have been playing a whole lot of Valheim lately pretty much that's all I've been playing in Valheim one of the mer first uh, meads that you get is a raspberry blueberry mead so I thought why not make one here so uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our honey and we're gonna add it to our container. We have a gallon size glass jar. We're going to weigh out uh, probably just under three pounds of honey. I want it to be really sweet when it's at the end. Um, I've got a different kind of yeast that I've been using or then I've been using. I've been using the Oh, I actually don't remember which one it is. But I just got one that's got a lower tolerance. So the one that I got, the old one that I got, it went up to 18%. And I realized after making a few meets that 18% seems really, really, really high. And I don't really... I don't like how strong it, it tasted like when it went when it got done it went super dry and it was not sweet at all and it wasn't very good I didn't like it very much so we're gonna try to make this one a lot sweeter I ended up having to go back through and add a lot of honey uh, in at the end later on and that's never good well I mean it's not necessarily bad but I just feel like it would be a lot better <clears throat> if it just came out to be roughly the way I want it to taste anyways. By the way, if you guys like these videos, if you like, you know, my videos in general, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel. So far, we have two pounds... And actually, we'll go, we'll go right to three. That's a lot, though. That's fine. It's going to be super sweet. It's going to be good. A dessert mead. Um, <laughs> so we got three pounds of honey in here. As you can see, fair amount of honey. Now what we're going to do is going to be, well, I guess getting the honey out of this thing. Uh, we're going to mix some water into here. And then we're gonna add a whole bunch of blueberries and some raspberries. So I pulled out a pound of blueberries and a half pound of raspberries. And that's what we're gonna add. So this is some spring water and everything, like legit everything, all the ingredients here, with the exception of the yeast. I got it at Walmart. So we'll add water in there. And when it's all said and done, this stuff is going to be extremely, uh, I, I don't even know the word that, that I'm trying to think of, viscous thick because <laughs> it's three pounds of honey going into about a gallon size container well I mean it is a gallon size container so <clears throat> with the yeast or not the yeast with the honey and the berries we have to fit water in there and all together it's going to equal up to a gallon which means there's not going to be a gallon of water all in all with everything in there together However, it will be a gallon. So we got a, a bit of water in here, spring water. And now we just mix it all up. We want to get it as mixed, blended in as possible. It's very important to get, not only get everything you know, mixed in and blended, but also you want to try to aerate it, get a lot of oxygen into the brew. Just 
just keep shaking, shaking, shaking. When you think you're done, you're probably not. Now, everything that I'm using today has been sanitized, always, always. Um, I've mentioned it before. I was a chef many, many years ago. I was Surf Safe certified at 16 years old, working in the top steakhouse in Portland at 17. Sanitary is sanitation, being sanitary, is extremely important. One of the absolute most important things when it comes to making any type of food or beverage, anything that you're going to be digesting, ingesting, or anyone else. So be safe, be sanitary, clean up, loud neighbors. Now, I honestly have a feeling it's only about half a gallon of water, and I feel like once the berries are added to this, it's going to be pretty damn full. Now we get to add berries. This is going to be actually first before we do that. Let's go ahead and see just for humor's sake. I want to see what we're looking at as far as our uh, gravity before before fruits added. Let's see. <laughs> Off the charts, yo. So this is at 1.13. One point. At least I'm pretty sure that's that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, 1.13. Seems fairly high. I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I actually don't know which number this is, but it's still a very, very early need in my history of mead making. And I just realized I don't have my yeasts over here. All right, so, now that we have that in there, we'll take our blueberries and our raspberries. I don't think they're gonna fit in there. These are room temperature. I think I'm gonna need I don't know if a funnel will really work for this. Um, maybe for the juices. This is gonna be this is gonna be fun. We'll get the juices in like that.
it's going to be a very long and messy process because uh, this is the smaller of the bowls. You know what though? I wonder if the funnel would work better. No, it's too small. It's all right though, getting all that juice out. There's a lot of juice in this stuff. Ah! I lost a berry. Maybe we'll just keep it simple. There's just so much juice I don't want to lose. Ugh. Get all the juice out and then we'll go from there. As you guys can tell, I'm a seasoned meat making professional. It would be a lot better probably if you could see what I'm actually doing here. All right. Yeah, good fun. Good good stuff, right? So there's that. Now we got blueberries. We might actually have room in there for some more water. Ah. Yeah, the blueberries seem much easier. They're staying together a bit more. The other good thing about the berries is it should be a lot of uh, just nutrients. There's another one on the ground. Just natural plant nutrient, berry nutrient for the mead. And then I'll be cleaning up the outside of the container, of course, once it's all said and done, as well as all the stuff all over my counter that I'm dropping. If I took it a little bit slower, it'd probably be a bit easier. I think what I'm gonna do take one of these um, <clears throat> gallon containers once it's emptied out and just cut it apart. Well, that ain't so bad. Oh, if you, you lose a few here or there, oh well. It's getting pretty full though. And then the sweetness down at the bottom. Oh yeah. That's the good stuff right there.
spilled a lot. Don't worry, this towel is clean. It's just stained a little bit. Jeez, that was dirty. All right, so the meat is uh, looking really cool right now. Or I guess the must, it's not technically meat yet. Let's go ahead and look back at me. Eyes up here. So we got this going on. This should have a really, really cool color once it's all said and done. It's looking really awesome right now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and uh, get our yeast and throw it in there. Here we are back again. We have the Lalvin 71B. Now they do weigh these out, but they're about two teaspoons each packet. So you can get roughly about a teaspoon. Um, per gallon of this yeast, and they'll be uh, just doing the autofocus thing. Give me a second. Bam! Stuck. All right. So then we're just going to pour it right in. You know what? I probably should have uh, hydrated it first, but it's fine. It's not necessary. It's usually better to but it's not necessary. And then you put an air lock on it and let it sit. Um, you don't really have to do much with it past this point, besides just let it sit there. Obviously, when you're doing this, you wanna take your initial gravity, your original gravity, and you wanna write it down. That way, you know where you're at um, when it comes down to finishing it and everything like that. It's fairly important. I wouldn't say it's necessarily the most important thing in the world, but it is pretty important. So then you take your airlock, get some sanitizer solution in it. I guess I can go ahead and swirl this stuff around. That part's not fully necessary, but should help get things woken up, started flowing properly. Now, a very frustrating, annoying things about these thing about these airlocks is they don't like to stay in place. So, as I've gone over in previous videos, get either a rubber band or a hair tie or some type of stretchy tie down type material you can uh, strap it between this and the handle the loop right here and it's usually good enough to hold it tight you just want to make sure that right here you have a nice solid seal if you have a solid seal right there you know that bugs aren't getting in you have sanitizer solution up here you know bugs aren't getting in 
the stuff that needs to escape out can escape out, um, which is the gases that are being created as well as any oxygen that's remaining in the container. You let it sit. Um, every day, I would say, every couple days, it's smart to grab it, hold it, and just stir. I've done, I've done a video on that to show you guys. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's the Valheim mead. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess you could call it Valheim. It's really, it's, it's blueberry raspberry. It's a blueberry raspberry mead. Um, this is one that I'm going to take you guys through the entire process. So we're starting it out today. And like I said, it did have the original gravity of 1.13. This is a 12%, um, yeast. So it should come out pretty sweet still, which is good. That'll make me happy. That's what I'm aiming for. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see y'all back in about a week when I do an update on this specific mead. It looks like the yeast may already be starting to activate. It always Sometimes it's really quick. Sometimes it takes a while. That's another thing. Um, I don't know. I usually have really good luck. My stuff starts to activate really, really fast. It could be just the environment I'm in. Um, it could be the temperature I keep my house. It could be a lot of things that go into that. It's just sometimes it happens. Sometimes and yeah, we're we'll we'll probably get our first bubble uh, before the end of this video. So that's really cool. Um, I'm really excited, actually, to see where this video, or this video, where this meat goes. I'm excited to see how it is in the end. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll wait for this first bubble to go through. It looks like maybe another minute. We'll let it pop one time, just to, just to see that it's, it's going. It's already working, it's already doing its job, which means all it has to do now is wait. All it needs is time. That's one of the most interesting things about this is that there's a lot of people that are fairly intimidated by fermenting, be it making mead, making kim uh, kombucha, uh, beer, or whatever it is, just basic fermentation. Um, and it, there's really not much to it. I mean, it's quite literally just throw the stuff in the container, throw the yeast in there, let time do what time does. Um, oh, here it goes. We're going. We're going. Wait for it. Yeah, see? Already. Yeah, I'm kind of high. Don't worry about it. It slowed down for me. Not for me. Slowed down in spite of me. There we go. There's a couple mini bubbles. We got a we got a full bubble working. Here we go. Here we go. So close. So close. It's there. It's pushing. It's like it's like uh giving birth. <laughs> it's nothing like giving birth. Bam. There we go. First bubble. This is going to be a good one. Um, now, I left enough room in there to where it shouldn't have a problem like it sometimes does. Yeah, I guess maybe we'll do an update every couple days on this. We'll just pull it out. We'll talk about it. We'll talk to you guys for a couple minutes while I shake it up. Um, anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying Valheim. Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys are playing, how far you are. I, I've actually only beaten the second boss. I'm not worried about pushing too far, um, or too fast, rather. I'm taking it super slow, having a lot of fun, just building a whole bunch of shit. Anyways, I'm going to quit rambling. I'm, I'm excited this is going. I'm going to go and put it on the shelf, and I'm going to go to bed, because i, I got to be up in like six hours, seven hours. Anyways, I'm out. Have a good night, guys.